please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Welcome to the show and a big, big announcement uh, that came in on Fortis Transaction is a third bidder which has really stepped in and this is the Berman family as well as the Munjal Investment both put together and we have the management of both the companies joining us right here. Mr. Munjal, Dr. Berman, so good to have you on CNBC TV 18, Ekta Batra and Nisha Podar here from the studios in Mumbai. Now, First question to you, you have tried in the past to uh, talk about this transaction with Fortis Healthcare. It has failed. What gives you the confidence that this time your interim uh, investment of 1,250 crore rupees in two tranches after due diligence is going to really make the cut, especially with Manipal transaction in a very advanced stage and in exclusivity at this point? So one of the issues that is clear is that right now this company uh, needs liquidity a, at an urgent basis. And what we have offered is, is something that will be helpful to the entire system and can be triggered and actioned very, very quickly. Uh, I'm not sure they have any other option or offer uh, with them that allows them to, uh, to get this kind of liquidity and to complete a transaction in this efficiency and the time frame that we are talking about here. Okay. I, I, I completely agree with that. Um, and uh, yeah, go ahead. No, go ahead, Dr. Berman. No, uh, actually, uh, the the other issue is that uh, uh, in in uh, at least the uh, Manipal offer. The first thing is to demerge the hospital business from the rest of the company. We are saying uh, the, the company should uh, remain uh, intact uh, and we will invest uh, into the company directly. Okay. Uh, Mr. Munjal, uh, you know, let me come to you on this then. Uh, with this 18.3% uh, stake that you will probably eventually have post the 1250 crore investment, uh, do you want to become the promoter of Fortis? So first, we don't know what the percentage would be, because that will depend on uh, the price at which the uh, shares get issued. Uh, so we are looking at this as an investment right now. So uh, we, we have not thought through to, to anything beyond this. We believe at this moment the company sorely needs both liquidity, stability, and an ability to manage itself to move forward. Uh, from the little bit of a log jam that it appears to be in at this moment. Okay, so if you continue to say have an investment in Fortis, um, say uh, to the tune of around 15 to how much ever, 20 odd percent, yep. but there is a parallel promoter that comes in, say with a restructured deal, say the likes of IHH or a Manipal, would you still be open to being an investor with another promoter in the company? So first, I'm not sure the company, uh, once it gets its liquidity and is back on track, uh, I'm not sure the company needs to restructure itself or do anything else uh, in a hurry at this moment. Because it is, a, it is a good quality asset. It is well diversified in geography. It has good quality talent. It has very good equipment. So it just needs the ability to uh, use its potential, to actually ex to expand itself to, to get to its real potential. Uh, that is a real need. Uh, the restructuring, etc., were almost coming as a compulsion uh, because of the kind of offers that the company had received. Right. Uh, I'm not sure that's the best option for any ongoing company to start to restructure itself, unless there is a good reason for it. So, uh, Mr. Munjal, that and brings... Not only that, but to mm. formulate uh, a strategy for the company at this very early stage mm. uh, would be a wrong thing to do. All right, so to that, I would like to uh, counter question on this. Is this an interim arrangement in the absence of mm -hmm. a promoter of Fortis Healthcare where there is no single largest shareholder who can really take the call, where you want to come in, have a board seat, so that while there are big players like IHH as well as TPG Manipal competing for this particular asset, later you can make a good return out of this investment. Is that that something that is also conceptualized with this particular offer? 
So you, sh you should know this uh, about our organization that we do not take short-term calls. Uh, all the investments that we have made have always been long-term investments. And we believe this is a place which both deserves and needs uh, an investment which will help it to remain stable. Uh, what happens in the long-term future, I, I can't say today. Hmm. But uh, it's clearly uh, an investment we are making because we think this is uh, both it helps the healthcare system in the country, which is a crying need for the nation, and helps the second largest healthcare system, uh, which was in some sense was floundering right now. Uh, and both of us have a deep interest in healthcare, <coughs> and this is both an opportunity and in some sense a public service. Also, Dr. Barman, if uh, I can... Uh, not only that, but I think uh, at this stage, the comp... Yes, please go ahead. At this stage, what I... At, at this stage, the company needs uh, 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 people uh, in, in there, investors in there, who have a long-term perspective and are not just looking to the next quarter. Okay. Uh, Mr. Munjal, this additional 750-odd crores is contingent on due diligence. So in the next three weeks, if you don't like what you see on the books, that additional 750 crores won't come in? It's a non-binding offer? So the 500 crores, as it's written in the offer, goes in regardless of anything else. Hmm. And the 750 crores clearly is dependent on the diligence. And we've said we'll do the diligence very quickly uh, because we don't think there is a lot more that one can do in this much time than then take a, take a fair look at what's going on in terms of its size and scope, etc. Uh, there have been issues around this company uh, for which certain inquiries, etc. have already been raised. Mm. So at some point, those reports will also come in. So there will be enough diligence out there, uh, I guess, available over time. So we are making this call because we believe in, in the asset and the company. And frankly, as I said, the need to, to both uh, retain and uh, encourage a good quality healthcare system. Okay, uh, just on that specific point, uh, one of the reasons why Manipal restructured the deal in the way they did was to circumvent the legal liability that they might face um, from the likes of, say, uh, the SFIO probe or anything that might happen in terms of siphoning of, uh, um, you know, allegations of siphoning of money. Uh, in your sense, are you ready to probably take on the risk that might emerge from an SFIO probe or an internal audit that is underway? So the, the probes, etc., are, are underway for what has happened in the past and not with what is going on right now or will happen in the future. Uh, our attempt is really to see how one can stabilize the, the present and build a, a better future. So I think any of the authorities, the regulatory authorities, investigating authorities uh, are very aware of what is going on. And this is a very public uh, situation. This is a public transaction in a publicly listed company. So there's no, uh, there's no backhand channel, there's no secret transaction going on. So it's so open. Everybody will know if, if we are investing, we are investing today. Right. Uh, so our role as investors in this entity expands from the, the little bit of share we had to a larger amount that we will be uh, getting, hopefully, as this uh, uh, transaction gets concluded. So, Mr. Munjal, the similar uh, you know, risk factors really come in from the Daichi legal tangle as well. And that's was, that was precisely the biggest reason why a restructured deal only for sale of assets was really conceptualized by Manipal TPG away from the merger which they had earlier thought of. So in this case, you're taking a direct stake and a substantial one, making you the single largest shareholder of Fortis Healthcare. If any such later risks come, won't you be putting your investors also at a big risk? So one is our uh, understanding of what is going on uh, is clear that Daiichi has uh, pointed a finger at or has lodged cases against the earlier promoters of this company. Uh, it is not to do with the company itself. And since their shareholding of this company now is well below 1%, so the, uh, uh, the possibility of the case reaching this entity or anybody connected to this entity 
right now is is frankly uh, very minimal to zero. No, we've been also given legal advice that uh, we are fairly uh, insulated uh, from any action that Daichi may or may not take. Okay. All right. So, Dr. Barman, uh, then help us also understand uh, that would you be also open to tying up with another strategic player uh, for buying out the whole of Fortis Healthcare once this initial stage and your offer is accepted? Listen, well, I, I, think, I think we've got to see what is in the best interest of the company. And uh, we will, you know, uh, both Sunil and myself, we will do uh, e exactly what is in the best interest of the company uh, and of the shareholders and of all stakeholders for that matter. Uh, whether they are uh, employees, whether they are doctors, medical, non-medical uh, professionals in there, uh, shareholders, uh, and, uh, uh, you know, uh, definitely the patients. Yeah. You know, the patients come first, and that, that's what this company is there for. Yeah? So uh, we, will, we will, you know, whatever is in the best interest of the company, we will do that. Dr. Berman, I just wanted to expand on that point. Um, what is the kind of experience in healthcare, which is hospitals and diagnostics, which you all can bring to the table? And why would it be a better fit with you all as opposed to a company such as, say, the likes of a Manipal or IHH, which have run hospitals previously and are doing so in the Indian market? Uh, you know, th that, that really is a, is a uh, very moot point uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, we are at the end of the day a minority shareholder in there and, you know, we would like to propose whatever is best for the company, mm. yeah? Uh, just because we have not run, uh, actually Sunil has, it runs one of the biggest hospitals uh, in the whole country. Uh, if you uh, elaborate on that. Actually, both. Yeah. Uh, both uh, Anand and I have been involved in healthcare in, in more than one uh, aspect. Uh, Anand is involved in looking at, at diagnostics. He has been involved in oncology. Uh, their firm has been in, in, the, in the, not directly running hospitals, but on the, on the periphery. They've been involved in pharma for a very, very long time. And I had uh, DMC and H in Ludhiana, which is one of the largest uh, teaching hospitals in the country. It's, it's a more than a 1,500-bedded hospital with uh, multiple super specialties and a, a college and a medical college and a nursing college. So we, we do have experience. Uh, plus, don't forget, we've run very diversified operations, uh, uh, both of us in many, many different ways. And uh, we understand how a large enterprise uh, is managed, how a diversified enterprise is managed. Sure. Uh, in this case, we are uh, minority shareholders, so we will certainly like to give suggestions and ideas as shareholders. Uh, we are not uh, actively running the business. Sure. Mr. Munjal, on that point, uh, there is a chance that you might even become the majority shareholder for Fortis. So let's not rule that out. One of the things which is a big concern for Fortis, and it has been for a long time, is the trust holding in Singapore, the REIT in Singapore, RHT Holdings, which holds around 11 to 12 odd properties. And uh, there is a fear that you need to secure that as soon as possible, or else there could be trouble uh, in terms of the hospital business. Have you heard, have you thought of any plans on account of that? So uh, the RHG transaction, as you're aware, again, this is a public knowledge. Uh, the company has signed an agreement to buy back the assets from that trust. So uh, plus, I don't understand your question as why would there be trouble? Uh, it's a financial transaction where some of the assets were owned by the trust and for which the trust actually gets paid. Uh, so if they remain there, the company has to continue to make payment. Uh, if the company buys back the assets, uh, the payment pay payouts to the trust will stop. So, so there's a pro and con on both sides, but it's not nothing to do with trouble. It's, it's a business and a financial decision to, to treat it one way or the other. Okay, so the understanding is that RHT would continue as per what it is currently continuing. No, I'm not saying one way or the other. What I'm saying is this will be okay. a business decision that the company has to take in its own interest, whether it wants to continue this arrangement or whether it wants to buy back the assets, because in any case, the company has now already signed an agreement to buy the assets back. So uh, it's purely a financial arrangement. It, it doesn't do anything more than that.
your finances apart from the debt repayment as and when required for buying out assets and also for taking care of the operations? Is there any plan of action on that one as well, uh, Mr. Manjal? I think we should stick to what, what is going on right now. We have made a very clear offer. It's very public. Uh, we've offered uh, to invest 1,250 crores uh, into the company. Uh, and we believe the company's current situation requires liquidity. We also believe we are putting in more than the current requirement to allow the company to, to do all the right things, to clear their overdues with creditors, to make sure employees are being compensated on time, to make sure any bank dues are, are, are being paid. So the company can actually focus on what it, it matters. The healthcare is actually the core of what, what this is. This is not just a plain business. It is a social service as well. You have to ensure uh, that the care portion in this actually uh, gets the highest focus. That is our attempt so to, to take away what we believe right now is a constraint that, that is there, which is dragging down some of the areas uh, which are otherwise critically important. So the, the doctors and the teams can focus on what really matters. Right. I, as an investor, and you already own uh, 3%, so I understand your concern about the liquidity position of the company. But what makes you think that Manipal TPG, which has given a definitive agreement, has really not spoken to the lenders and not taken care of the liquidity position and the requirements in the interim if a deal is really going through? So first, I don't want to comment on what others are doing because that would be speculation. I can only tell you what we are thinking and what the way we are approaching this. And because we do believe, as I said earlier, I'm repeating myself, this is a good quality asset. It's got good people in there. It's got a good team. We believe they, they can manage this uh, asset well. It just needs the right uh, support to focus on what really matters. So on that front, technically help us understand also, Mr. Okay. Munjal. Thank you. Uh, just one more question, Mr. Munjal, before we let you go. Uh, we do understand that there is an exclusivity period in which uh, you know TPG Manipal has entered into this agreement for. So uh, technically, can the board really uh, you know cancel and terminate that exclusivity and go ahead with your offer if they like your offer better? What is the technicality and the legality behind this? Uh, can you throw more light? on that so the board has to uh, has the right to do what it believes is the right thing by the company by all stakeholders of the company uh, I presume the board will will do what is they are legally permitted and what is incumbent upon them as a responsibility to to make sure the best option for all stakeholders of the company is the choice that they make. But eventually, it's not the board. It's going to be the shareholders will take the decision. OK, Mr. Munjal, just before we okay. let you go, uh, right. have you spoken? Right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks uh, so much, Mr. Munjal, as well as Dr. Berman, for um, uh, speaking to CNBC TV 18 and giving us all your details. But definitely, it is restricted right now, Ekta, uh, because they haven't given more details about what they intend to do once their initial offer is really accepted. So we'll have to really see how the shareholders and the board of Autis Healthcare really reacts to this. With that, it's a wrap on this show. Thanks so much for tuning in.